In this video, we're going to look at actually exporting LMN timesheets into QuickBooks. And this is where the rubber really hits the road. Here's how we're going to do payroll and job costing, everything relating to employee timesheets in QuickBooks without actually doing anything. This is going to take us 60 seconds or less of actual import time, and you'll have every payroll hour exported perfectly for pay paychecks and job costing. The purpose of this export is to show you how we can do payroll and job costing with no manual data entry, so absolutely minimum office time. Previously, job costing's always been difficult because it's taken so much time to collect those papers, to correct the mistakes, to enter them into something, and to hope that it's accurate. We'll show you how to do it here in just a few minutes, far less time than you're probably even spending collecting the paper timesheets, much less processing them. Couple of basic assumptions. We just want to make sure you've watched the setup videos that come before this. So setting up your payroll codes, your service items, setting up LMN time jobs and tasks, and setting up the QuickBooks sync. We're going to assume you've already watched those videos, that these things are set up, and we're ready to export time. These are sort of things you need to set up once, and they, they last for a long time, but it's important to have them set up before you do this. Here we are in LMN time, and I've got a week's worth of timesheets already approved. It is important that timesheets are approved or else they won't export to QuickBooks. They have to fall under the approved setting. You can approve time using the approved time task on the left. There's a lot more information about that in the help video on the screen. We'll assume you've already figured that out and that you've got approved timesheets and you're ready to export. Once you're ready, you're going to open your QuickBooks sync tool and you're going to open it to the LMN time page. So there's estimating and there's time. You should be on the time page. We're assuming again that you've gone through each of these steps already and you've linked your payroll items and you've linked your QuickBooks jobs. So what you want to do is click import time. It's going to say click next when you're ready. It just wants to make sure you've got QuickBooks open in the background. I do. I'm now getting a warning that's saying I have LMN time jobs that have not been matched to QuickBooks. That should be a flag for you to match anything that doesn't exist yet. You can click yes to launch the job matching wizard. For the purposes of this help video, I don't need to do that right now. I have matched my job. Now it's asking me what time period I want to import for. I'm going to pick the week starting April 20th. It's important to realize that LMN time only will export time in batches of one or two weeks. We can't do any less than that. With overtime rules, you need to have at least a week's worth of data to make sure you apply the rules correctly. And if you're doing a day here and a day here and then backwards a day, you could really screw that up. So one week batches are how it gets exported out of time. Click next when you're ready and it asks you which employees do you want to export for. By default, you'll probably have all your employees selected, but if you wanted to just do one specific employee to correct an error, you could do that. When I hit next, it's going to look for eligible timesheets in QuickBooks. It's going to prompt me to make sure I have permissions in QuickBooks to do this. I'm going to go ahead and say I do. And now it's looking for existing time. And what it prompted me is that I have existing time for this time period already. And I did this on purpose to show if you have a timesheet in QuickBooks that already exists in the period of time you're trying to export, it's going to give you this warning. And I have the options to delete existing time and recontinue with the export I'm doing, to continue with my export without deleting the existing time, or to absolutely abort the current import and just uh, leave everything as is. If you make a mistake when you're exporting your payroll, this yes is really handy because it'll just go through and wipe out the time for that week and only for the week that you're exporting and then just re-export it out of time. So that's what I'm going to do here. So it goes in and removes the existing time records that are there and now it's going to re-export all my timesheets that I've created for the week. I created a very small week, just enough for that job, just to show you the examples. My import's complete. It said I had no errors and 24 time records were imported into QuickBooks. So let's see what that looks like in QuickBooks. I'm going to go Employees, Enter Time, and I'm going to go to Use the Weekly Timesheet to show you where the information went. Now we made some time for Leela Perez, so I'm going to pick Leela, and I'm going to pick that week. And here's how her time came over from LMN Time. She worked on the Sandra Alberts job. She was working on two different types of tasks that week, hardscaping and softscaping. On Monday, she did 10 hours worth of hardscaping at her regular rate. Tuesday, she was doing softscaping for 11 hours and 55 minutes. 
Wednesday, back to the hardscaping for 10 hours and 52 minutes. On the Thursday, she worked in softscaping for 7 hours and 8 minutes, and then it flipped her into overtime because she passed the 40-hour threshold that we have for overtime. If you look at your LMN time and you go to settings and you go to payroll, your overtime settings are here. So when LMN time exported the overtime data, it knew after 40 hours of Leela's time, it has to start using the overtime payroll code, and it did so, so that she'll be paid accurately. You can have any number of jobs here. So if you're in a maintenance or a snow crew, this job list could be really long, as your crews may hit 10, 12, 15 jobs a day. That's fine. It'll still work. The more jobs you have, the more hours your office saves processing this time. But what it gives me is fantastic job costing, both on a job level, but also on an item level, hardscaping versus softscaping. And it's going to use Leela's wages, like the actual to the penny cost of Leela's wages or uh, anybody else. We Josh also works. So it's going to take Josh's wages for these hours at these times and apply them to this job, but also to the service item on this job. Now, it's also important to realize that job costing in QuickBooks doesn't actually happen until you generate the paycheck. So the job costing information won't show up in reports until after you've generated your paycheck. So I'm going to quickly generate an unscheduled payroll here just to get our costs in. i got to make sure my week is correct. And I'm only going to export the time for those employees we just did there, Josh and Leela and Marcus and myself. So I'll hit continue. And it's gone ahead and calculated the gross pay and the net pay and the taxes, etc. And I'll go to create paychecks. And they have been successfully created. If I go to the employee center now and look at transactions and look at a paycheck, there's Josh's paycheck. And sure enough, his paycheck is calculated correctly. And the rate that he was paid and the hours that he worked have all been successfully set to the correct job, the correct service item. When I go to reports now, and I go to job costing, and I go to job detail, I'm going to run that report for the Sandra Alberts job. And now you can see the job costing starting to take shape. The revenue, if you remember from a previous video, came over because I made an invoice for the Sandra Alberts job for 20% of the job. Now the costs are starting to take shape. You can see I've, I've got a cost of $3,600 for hardscaping, $816.72 for softscaping. These costs are from the timesheets that we created for this job. So they're right down to the hour and to the wages that we paid for the work on this job. You're really starting to get excellent job costing information here. And you know it's 100% accurate because it generated directly from the employee's timesheet. So whatever we paid them to the penny, overtime, all that stuff included, even the taxes, the labor burden that goes over top of it, all those costs have been allocated to this job so I can see correctly what I earned and what I spent on this job in terms of revenue and time. And in the next couple of videos, we'll look at how to enter vendor invoices so that you can now see material costs on this report as well, really get a sense of exactly how well we're doing.